I'm sure you've heard of the saying by now that thoughts are things. It's something that's been repeated for many, many years over and over again. Thoughts are things, thoughts are things, thoughts are things. Now it's actually with really good reason why this idea has been repeated for many, many years. And it not only applies to manifestation, it goes way deeper than that. In fact, thoughts are things is quite literally true. That's because there is such a thing as a thought form. And when a lot of power, a lot of energy is pumped into a particular thought form, they can even take on a bit of density and have a presence. Now, why this is crucial to understand is because a lot of these thought forms, we can also call egregores and pendulums, can have a massive influence over your life to the negative if you're not aware of them and don't know how to remove them or get them out of what we can call your energetic field. In fact, most people have what we call an egregore around them most of the time, not because the egregore needs to be there, but because of the way this person is living and most people are living it's the perfect environment for negative thought forms, egregores, or pendulums. And the reason this is so detrimental is that these egregores, these pendulums, these thought forms feed off of negative energy and literally, in a way, suck you dry of energy. And so in my eyes, it is paramount to not only become aware of what these thought forms are, you can also learn what they are on the positive side where they come in and actually energize you and help you and all this. But we need to remove these negative thought forms, learn how to keep them away because there's a very simple way to make it so they never latch on to you again. And then from there to be able to move on from that to start really creating the reality we want for ourselves. And I'll just say right now, it is damn near almost impossible to create the reality you want if you have negative thought forms, negative egregores stuck to you in your day-to-day -day life. And so in this video, we're gonna be diving deeper into what thought forms are, what egregores and pendulums are a little bit more, what you can do to remove the ones that may be on you. It's said that most people have about three of these on them at any given time, unless they're doing something to remove them and keep them at bay. So we're gonna be going over how you can remove them first and foremost, and also how you can keep them from coming back that's what we're going over next. So before we get into thought forms, egregores, and pendulums, we need to cover just very briefly why these things matter. Why is it in our reality that thoughts have such an effect? These thought forms can sabotage, just like I mentioned in the intro. Why is it that this thing called a thought form, an egregore, a pendulum, can even come in and disrupt your life? Or on the other end of the spectrum, why is it that more positive gathered thoughts can actually give you a lot of momentum and start helping you attract the things you want. And the reason mainly is because we live in a holographic universe, a holographic reality. And we can also call this something similar to a virtual reality. And this is why things like energy and uh, frequency and vibration, thoughts which carry a resonance, energy which carries a certain resonance, are so crucial in our day to day. I've said this before, but you can look into the latest research of this, and we've known this actually for a, quite a while, that our reality is actually made up of mostly empty space and energy, and a tiny fraction of reality is made up of physical matter. So I'll have like the percentage come on screen so you can see it. But within that 99 plus percent, that's energy and empty space, this is where more of these things exist. I mean, you can't even fathom what exists within this realm in things that we cannot see. You know, even with our sight and certain senses, we can only perceive things from a certain range, from a certain frequency, which gives much more validity to these things called thought, thought forms, egregores, uh, pendulums. And when I describe how these things operate, you might have some experiential uh, rememberings of this actually happening in your life. Because when I go over how these things actually operate in your life, you might go, wait a second, that's happened to me. I've experienced that, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, because reality, this holographic reality is, again, that 99 plus percent empty space and energy, it means that reality is subject to influence. And I'm not gonna dive too deep into this video and all that because I, I've gone over it in many other videos um, about how the outer world follows the inner world, but it's just to give you an idea of how our reality is not as it seems, and that's why things like thought forms, pendulums, egregores absolutely exist, just because it's beyond the physical realm. It's kind of in an in-between realm between the spirit spiritual and the physical. It's like on the mental plane. Um, I don't know if we can also call it ethereal plane, but there's more than one plane 
of existence. But just to understand um, or even look more into this idea that we live in almost like a virtual reality. Now it's the most intricate, most advanced virtual reality, you know, way beyond anything that we can construct because it's coming from the infinite. It's like an infinite virtual reality or it's coming from the infinite. Um, however, that's the kind of reality we live in, which is what these kind of forms are born out of, these thought forms, these egregores, and these pendulums. Everything is interconnected. It is an interconnected matrix, meaning that you are interconnected to everything and everyone on the planet, in the universe, in some way. And that's going to be important to know, especially when we touch upon egregores and pendulums, which have to do with collective thought. Now, when it comes to influencing reality, your thoughts, your energy, what you resonate with plays a massive role in you creating the reality you want to create. Your reality specifically is so subject to influence, so malleable. And then the more people that calibrate their reality to a certain place also plays into the collective reality. That's why we talk about the great awakening. That's why we talk about the awareness shifting on the planet, because as more and more people wake up, become aware of certain information, start thinking differently, it actually feeds into the collective, which helps other people become aware of these things. It expands consciousness and allows for so many uh, different like, possibilities. This is why if you go a thousand years ago, the collective consciousness was at a different level. Things like slavery and other things of that nature were considered okay and weren't just underground like they are today. It definitely exists, but it's just underground now because it wouldn't be accepted in the public consciousness. It wouldn't be accepted in the collective consciousness. You know, imagine where that's going to be a hundred years from now, two hundred. Essentially, the more individuals that change their individual reality, that create reality in the way that they want, the more they change their own hologram, um, their own energetic field, which we'll get into, the more it helps the collective field, the collective hologram, etc., etc. Now, your thoughts and your energy have a certain resonance, and ultimately it is the thoughts and energy you are in most of the time. Now, we understand now that we don't just have this physical body, we have what we can call an energy body that surrounds us as well. Now, this energy body goes beyond just your physical body. Some energy bodies are expanded further out than others, and usually the higher conscious you are, the more aligned you are, the more um, farther out your energy body expands because it has more power behind it and kind of the more dense you are, the more committed to the physical, the more particle you are and not wave, kind of the closer to the body this energetic body becomes. But you still have one that expands beyond you. Now, this is important to understand because within this energy body are essentially going to be the thoughts and energies, so feelings that you have been feeling most of the time and you have, even if you've not known it, calibrated into this energy body. So, for example, if you think thoughts of love and if you feel feelings of love and similar or feelings most of the time, your energy body is going to be calibrated to that resonance and then it's going to draw in other things of the same resonance. So for example, let's say my energy body is mainly of love and gratitude and things of that nature and my energy body is quite expanded. It is an electromagnetic um, kind of aura, an electromagnetic energy body, meaning it magnetizes similar things to it. So it's going to magnetize more thoughts of love and peace and joy. It's going to magnetize people who think the same way. It's going to magnetize opportunities that are also at that level that would bring me more of that experience. So love, peace, and joy. But on the other end of the spectrum, and this is where most people are, and this is when we start getting into pendulums and egregores and things of that nature, but most people have an energy field that's calibrated more negative. And so if we were able to see it, and some people can, when people who can see auras and that this kind of thing does exist, where people can see kind of the energetic resonance someone is on. And you can tell too, because you can feel it. You know how a lot of times you can feel the energy or emotion someone is in? That's going to go a long way to telling you what their energetic field is like. And so if you're calibrated more negatively, it means you have like these thoughts you've been thinking a lot, kind of stuck in this energy field, the resonance of that, these feelings, and it's kind of all over your energy body. In the same way that if you eat a bunch of junk food, it's going to show up in your body in some way, in your physical body, however. But if you consume consume junk thoughts all the time or think on junk thoughts, low conscious thoughts, if you think junk feelings, and it's not like they're bad feelings, but you choose lower conscious feelings and you feel those most of the time, that gets stuck almost in the same way in your energetic body as bad food will in a way get stuck 
in your physical body. Now, why this is crucial to understand is because if let's say that's going on and you have these things stuck in your energetic field and that's the resonance you're sending out, well, you're receiving more of that back, more things that are gonna cause you to feel negative, more things that are going to cause you to continue to experience that unless you change the energetic field. And remember, the energetic field has to do with the inner world, the thoughts and the feelings. This is why we say that the outer world follows the inner world because your outer world is going to follow whatever your energetic field is resonating on. It's gonna decide what thoughts start coming in, you know, what people start coming in, what you're gonna even give your attention to. For example, when you get to a certain place of love and gratitude and all this, if something negative happens, you might not even pay attention to it. You might miss it. You might just completely brush it off or you might come to it with a place of love so it doesn't affect you. It doesn't invade your energetic field. It's, it has this protection around it because you've calibrated in a sense love and gratitude and all these kinds of thoughts and energy and resonance in your energetic field. But if it's negative, you start to attract all kinds of things, which is when we'll also get into egregores and pendulums because you're going to start attracting them as well. And essentially, this is so crucial to manifestation and creating your reality in the way you want, because guess what? If you have an energy field, if you have this, this, this field around you, this electromagnetic field, this aura around you, and it is negative, and that's what's being calibrated because that's what you've been consistently thinking and feeling, you're not gonna create reality in the ways that you want. You are always creating reality, by the way, but when you have this field, you're going to start, again, attracting more of those negative things, and I assume that's not what you want. Ultimately, we want to do things to raise our consciousness, change from the inner to the outer, and we're also gonna go over how you can start removing a lot of things that are in this negative field because this negative field will attract, again, things called pendulums and egregores, which we will touch upon in just a moment. Speaking of the holographic reality, something that's going to help you create reality in the ways that you want is today's sponsor, Flaska. Now, Flaska makes these incredible glass bottles that have actually been calibrated to change the structure of the water that is put in them to higher levels of consciousness like love and gratitude. They have actually worked personally with Dr. Iyamoto's laboratories, who is famous for the water crystal experiments, where I'll put some on screen right now, where they showed that different levels of consciousness consciousness pumped into water or calibrating the water actually changes its structure and the effects that it has. This is a product I use every single day. I believe in so much. I've gotten my girlfriend one, you know, my family members. I even give my koi fish some from time to time. There you go, guys. That's the good stuff. That's the good shit. Since we are made up of about 80% water, it is, in my eyes at least, important to be drinking very alive, almost like mountain spring water, which is what this helps to make your water like. You can learn more about Flaska through the link in the description. They'll also tell you how it works, how it can benefit you, and I can't recommend them enough. Now, let's jump back into the video. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier in the video, thoughts are things. They are very, very real. Now, you may not be able to touch them physically like you do things in the physical realm. So if I hold this up and I start touching it and whatever else, or sense it with our five senses for the most part. But you'd be surprised when we get to things like egregores and certain very dense thought forms, they sometimes can take on more density and even have like a shadowy figure to them. It's something I've actually experienced in my life. But let's get into kind of these thought forms and give, I'll give you my thoughts on what these are and also some of the things you can do, we'll move on to how you can remove them because the fact of the matter is why this is so crucial is if you're walking around with a bunch of egregores on you, a bunch of these thought forms kind of attached in your energy field, it is going to be so hard to have the energy to do what you want to do. It is going to block certain transmissions you're going to want to send out in order to manifest what you want to manifest. Essentially, you are creating just this, this steep cliff you have to climb to get to the things that you want when it isn't necessary and you're probably just unaware that these beings called thought forms or egregores, again pendulums is another word, are just on you and their job, essentially how they survive, is to literally drain your energy. They feed off of negative energy and so they will literally aim to keep you thinking negatively. They want you in a negative place because that's what feeds them and allows them to survive. So let's go over kind of thoughts and the power behind them and the feelings especially. Um, thoughts with feeling obviously are way more powerful. If you have a thought and there's just neutrality towards it, because if a thought pops in your head 
and you don't give any feeling to it, that thought essentially has no power. Because again, we're transmitters and receivers, so you may receive thoughts that are not coming from you. In fact, a lot of the time this happens. A thought can come to you and you're like, that's weird, I don't agree with that thought at all, I'm just gonna let that go. Well, it's not gonna have an influence on you. But if a thought comes in and you go, oh, and you start feeling guilty and shame, or you start feeling fear, or whatever else, well now you've emotionalized that thought and boom, into the energy field it goes or reinforces something in the energy field, in your electromagnetic field that is already there. Usually that's what happens. You just have this energy ball, we can call it, or just continually growing energy in your energy field. It's becoming stronger. And this is why people who are negative tend to spiral and it gets worse and worse and worse because this energy is building more and more and more. But let's just make it very simple. You can have a thought and a thought by itself in isolation, in a vacuum of one thing, isn't that powerful. But suddenly when more focus is put on that singular thought and kind of the feeling or kind of similar feelings associated with it, it gets a little more powerful. It gets a little bigger. It gets a little more, it has a little more form to it. It starts to gain more and more energy. When that thought has enough energy behind it, it can form what's called an egregore or a pendulum. Now you can think of an egregore and there's many people who will explain it differently, but just for the sake of keeping it very simple, it is a being, it is a thought form, it is kind of like a soulless being in a sense, it is made up of these thoughts, but it has taken form. Um, and its main job, what it does, is to feed off the negativity of people. Now, these are very powerful depending on the energy behind it. For example, the reason so many people want you to watch the news, like people in control, that want you to be conditioned into certain ideas, because very powerful pendulums have been created via these ideas, very powerful egregores. Meaning when you're tuning into the news, you are susceptible to the negative pendulum or egregore that has been created by the collective energy towards that news, which is usually fear. And so you have so many people who are tuning into things like the news. They are broadcasting out fear because that's the main energy it tries to put you in. And everyone's doing that, or a lot of people are doing that collectively, which strengthens the egregores and pendulums in association with that thing. And so this is why when you tune into the news, you can feel fear like that if you're not trained to be able to block it from coming in. I don't know if you've ever watched news or kind of one of these programs and you felt fear very, very quickly or worry or anxiety or one of these emotions. Why? Because there is a ton of collective energy via that source, which makes you very susceptible to a very powerful pendulum. Essentially, the more collective energy behind a certain idea or behind a certain thing, if you tune into that, you are now susceptible or open in a way to attack from that energy. You see, egregores and pendulums and these negative thought forms, they require you to drop your consciousness before they can affect you. Again, they feed on negativity. And so these beings, these egregores, these thought forms that are trying to kind of invade your energy, they have to have you at a certain level of calibration. If we look at the Hawking scale on this list, you have to be essentially below 200 on the most part in the levels of force for an egregore to be able to influence you or affect you. And so they will try and knock you down to that place. And if they fail to do so, they'll try maybe a couple more times and then move on because again, their ultimate goal, energy source. Energy source, who can I feed on? I need to feed, I need to feed on negativity. So I'm gonna go find someone already there or I'm gonna find someone I think I can drop to that level. So again, these egregores, pendulums, aim to attach themselves to people in a negative vibration because essentially, again, just think of it like a food source for them. So in a way, they need that to survive. They need that to keep on living, but it certainly doesn't benefit you. Again, the behavior of an egregore or a pendulum is that once they're in your energy field, once they're attached to you, they don't want to lose their food source. So they will absolutely attract other negative thoughts to you. They will absolutely, to the best of their ability, try and influence you in doing certain things. If there's a loving energetic field, they might attempt to lower your energy, but they're gonna give up pretty quickly. And there's actually a number of times they'll try. I think it's about three or four times they will attempt. So they might have a try and attract a negative thought to you. They might try and do something like tune into a, a memory or something to try and lower your energy. But again, when you're trained and you have such a loving energy, you know how to flip it, you know how to protect yourself from that, you know how to let, let that thought that you know is not yours and you're like, that's interesting, and just let it go and the egregore will move on. But that's what they're aiming to do. They feed off the negativity. They're like a parasite. They think of them like a thought form parasite, an energetic parasite that wants to 
really suck the energy from the person, but have them continue to produce the energy in which they feed off of, which is negativity. And this is how they operate. So ultimately, we want to get you to a point where you can take your power back. And so I'm gonna give you a few tools and next steps that are gonna help you to do this. Now, the first one I've mentioned on this channel quite a bit, and it's shadow work. Now we can look at shadow work in many different ways, like unintegrated parts of ourselves, but we could even look at the form an egregore sometimes takes when it becomes a little more dense, which is kind of a shadowy figure. And so we can do shadow work on the egregores. And it's ultimately when you do shadow work, you're removing stuff stuck energy, stuck energy in your field, stuck energy in your body. You're removing these things that are really stuck to you and have a lot of energy behind them. Sounds similar to what I'm describing when it comes to egregores. And so shadow work is an amazing way to remove these entities, to remove these thought forms from you completely so that they are gone. Now, again, you will need to protect yourself just in case they try and come back and they will if an opening presents itself, but we need to kind of clean the, the plate, clean or have a clean slate, clean the plate, <laughs> have a clean slate, clean the plate of energy maybe so they can't get it, negative energy, but clean slate so they um, will be removed. And then you can start reconstructing your energy field and calibrating it and encoding it with positivity, with love, with the things you actually want to draw more into you. But this is why so many people struggle to manifest before doing shadow work because they have these egregores and stuck energy and they're trying to bring more in, but their resonance isn't on frequency with these things, no matter what they try and do to add things. And so we need to remove. Now I have a video that goes over shadow work that I will link in the description below, um, but there's many ways to do it. If you want like kind of a beginner's guide on how to start, you can check that out. Next, a very simple one is I kind of mentioned mentioned it earlier with the news, but please start removing yourself from certain, we'll call them pendulum stations. You have to understand that they cannot continue to tune into your energy for the most part if you're not tuning into the station. So think about it when you're tuning into a new station, you're now on a pendulum station. You are susceptible to attack and I don't care how developed you are. If you continue to watch that long enough, there will be a crack in which they will enter into your field. And so if you do things that you know is calibrated at a negative vibration, my invitation for you is to completely stop doing that or work on weaning yourself off that. And it's easy to tell, like when you do these things or you're around this kind of person or whatever else it is, you feel really, really bad. Next, I would really invite you to remove any shred of victim mentality you have within you. And the reason I say this is because for negative thought forms, for pendulums, for egregores, they love people that come from a victim state of mind. This is why so much of the programming, again, from certain people in control who wanna keep people down, disempowered, they don't want people who are empowered, spiritually aware, you know, manifesting their dream life, they don't want that. One of the reasons they do many things and even tell you, you're a victim, we're so sorry if you're here, let us help you, even though it's not really helping, it's keeping you in a perpetual loop of, you know, relying on government or relying on programs, never getting to a point where you can be the sovereign being of your own life. The reason they do that is because it opens you up to these energies. They love victim mentality. Then you will continually have these thought forms attaching to you because you're an easy target for them. You're an easy target of negativity that sees the world in a negative light typically, that feels negatively quite a bit, victimizing or blaming things outside of you, never taking responsibility. They love that. What they hate is someone who takes responsibility for their life. They hate someone who steps into their sovereignty and starts intentionally creating their life. Ultimately, when you take responsibility for your life, you take your power back. When you raise your power, you raise your consciousness, you create the shield for egregores to not be able to penetrate. And this is ultimately how you prevent egregores and pendulums from continually coming back in. You raise your consciousness. Again, if we look at the consciousness scale, if you're above and living above the level of 200 and above, you are essentially impenetrable to egregores for the most part. When you start getting to the higher levels like love and peace, it's impossible for an egregore to have influence on you because it cannot survive in your environment. If it was to try and come in your energetic field, it would die. So it's not going to stay there. It's going to look elsewhere. So that is ultimately the measure to remove egregores 
doors, if you see thoughts coming in, you see negative, uh, negativity coming in, you know, to look at it from a place of neutrality and then change it. Because the more you latch on to that, the more you feed that energy, the more of a, again, a fertile environment it is for these thought forms. But the more you calibrate your energy field in higher levels of consciousness, the more you actually attract positive thought forms. You can hook into, I don't know if it's correct to say pendulums, I'm not sure if it's always a negative connotation, but we'll say it, you'll attract positive pendulums, you'll be tuning in to the pendulums of love, to the pendulums of contribution, to the pendulums of gratitude. You will start attracting more things that help you feel that way. You know, that will mean more abundance. People who are also at that level of consciousness, opportunities at that level of consciousness, circumstances at that level of consciousness. And so again, protecting yourself, one of the best ways is to raise your consciousness. And I have a video where I go over energy, frequency, and vibration, how to raise your consciousness. I go over things that Nikola Tesla and others knew about this and give you some things to think about and ways to do this over in this video next. And so if you wanna to learn to how to truly protect yourself from these negative thought forms and start inviting in, um, attracting in more positive forms of thought, more positive entities and beings that are actually gonna assist you on your journey and actually want to help you, then I go check out this video next.